So today I'm probably gonna show you our house the messiest that I've ever shown it on video before. But do you know what's so interesting about this is that to me, this does not feel overwhelming. It doesn't even feel that bad. Um, I believe that I can get through it pretty quickly. And that never would have been the case in the past when our house was really messy. But it's because we have so highly simplified and I also just very naturally declutter as I go now. So today I wanna to show you how I clean and declutter at the same time, how we maintain our minimalist house, how, yeah, can it still get messy from time to time? Sure, but why it doesn't stress me out or overwhelm me. And if you just don't feel like you have any motivation right now, how we can very quickly overcome that. Let me, let's get set up in here. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start in the entry and work my way through the house. Uh, let's get set up and then I wanna share this new idea with you. But. If you are not feeling motivated right now, but you do wanna get some stuff done around your house, I love what Casey Davis says in her book, How to Keep House While Drowning. She says, she acknowledges, it's actually really hard to summon up, muster up 100% motivation when you're sitting on the couch. And so she says, what if we just did 5%? She says, anything that's worth doing is worth doing even partially. So what area or what thing could you make even 5% better right now? And so even as I look at this uh, entryway, again, um, it's like, it's a little stressful to me because I'm like, why is there just so much stuff here, right? Everyone just like drops everything. But I also know that I have the skills and I am able to get this all pulled back together. So I have my black trash bag. I already put some stuff in it and a box and let's get started. Okay, so like I said, even if you're not feeling 100% motivated, I love this idea of saying like, okay, what does 5% <laughs> motivation look like, right? And also we can body double. So that's where we're just virtually working together. There is something powerful about knowing someone else is working alongside of us. And so that's where these videos can be really great. I have a whole playlist of longer videos that are meant for body doubling when you're working to declutter. And so I'll, I'll make sure to link that in all of the places. But something else that I think is really helpful that Casey Davis says in that book, How to Keep House While Drowning, is she says, in any given space, there's only five types of items in there. Anywhere you look in your house, there's only five things that you're gonna find. One is trash, two is dishes, <laughs> three is laundry, four is items that belong there or have a home, and five is items that don't have a home. So really four out of those five things in any space aren't scary because they have a place to go, right? I have my black trash bag here, so any trash I'm coming across goes in there. I have a donation box, so if there's stuff that I'm like, it doesn't have a home and I don't wanna make a home <laughs> for it, I can just toss it in. But really the only thing that should be kind of a little bit intimidating or annoying in any space like this are things that you have that don't have a home. And so we can kind of set that stuff aside for right now, get everything that has a home into the place that it needs to go. And then at the end, look at the stuff that doesn't have a home and then decide, is this worth me making a home for? Where would that home be? Or should I just let it go so I don't have to create a home for it? So even in this space, I'm actually coming across all those categories of thing, things. I'm like, why is there like dirty laundry in here? There's like a washcloth under the, the shoe bench. I'm like, I don't, I don't understand what's going on here, right? but this space is actually coming together really well. So um, there was some stuff that I was putting away right away, like taking some stuff out to the garbage and, and the recycling, but I'm also making a pile of stuff to go to the basement. So I don't wanna leave this space just yet. And so I know myself and I will follow through with this now. So we have to be careful about making piles because we have to know ourselves. Am I the type that's gonna follow through no matter what? Um, even if I run out of time and I have to go pick up Adeline, when I get back, will I finish it? Or do I have a track record with myself where I make these piles and then I never get back to them? And then it's very stressful and I feel like a failure and I suck at decluttering and all of that, right? So I know myself and I do believe that I will go back and, well, I do, I know I will, and I have you holding me accountable. I will go back and take all of this down to the basement, but I don't wanna stop what I'm doing right now to take it there. So I am making a pile, but it's a strategic pile and I'm, I'm feeling good about it. Okay, so that was only like five minutes worth of work. And here's where we're at. I still need to put shoes away, so I'm gonna put those in the closet. I'm also looking for sandals that can get stored away down in the basement. So I'm gonna pull those out because those just don't need to be out here anymore. Um, I have a pile of stuff that needs to either go in the car or out in the garage, so I'm gonna run that out. And mostly that's it. And then I also have um, over here, 
So we put these extra coat hooks here, which I, I really like and they're very useful, but I don't love to always have lots of coats. So I want when everyone gets home and walks in the house for it to feel like really good and put together. So I'm gonna put these away as well. Um, but I do like having these hooks here for like temporary storage. It's better than them being on the bench, but I don't love it to like the coats to always stay there, right? So anyways, we'll get those put away too. Man, shoes are so hard. I think we have six people in our house and it just feels like there's always new ones coming in. Like even I just, I was gifted um, a pair of Hey Dudes, which is super fun. They're very comfortable, right? But I didn't actually like need another pair of shoes or anything. Um, but yet they're really comfortable and I wanna wear them more. And so it's just another pair to keep here. And so one thing that we do is we use like the container concept. So all of the shoes have to fit either on the bench or comfortably in those shoe racks we have or on the floor in a single row. And if it starts to creep up beyond that, I'm like, we have too many shoes. That means there's shoes that people are not wearing if there's that many pairs of shoes. So again, I'm always collecting data um, and asking myself like, okay, is this just a stuff needs to get put away problem or has the inventory crept up to a point where it's like too much for this space? And so mostly there wasn't really much we need to get rid of here today. Um, I am making a pair of a uh, pile of sandals that are all gonna get put away into the basement. I have a shoe bin down there for off season shoes. So those will go down there, but otherwise we've gotten, like we've made everything else fit. And then I got the coats put away as well. So this space is already feeling so much better, um, especially since it's the first place you walk into in our house. Like it just feels really nice when this space is all together. So the last thing I need to do is run these few things out to the garage and to the car and then also put my basement pile away. So I don't wanna leave this space without fully completing it, but it really didn't take that long a time and this feels really good. And it feels good that my organizing systems that I have put in place are, they seem to be holding up and working. Um, so I feel pretty good <laughs> about that too. And so as I'm working, again, I'm, I'm mostly cleaning and tidying and putting stuff away. Probably not even cleaning, I'm like tidying and putting stuff away, right? But I'm constantly scanning and looking for items to declutter. So within the closet, as I was putting stuff away, I saw these two things. This is a brand new duffel bag that Maggie got for her birthday. She wanted a bag for her Taekwondo gear. However, and I even picked it out and sent it to Diana to give her for a birthday present, but it wasn't big enough for all of her gear. So it's just been sitting in there since July with the tags on. And I, it was not inexpensive and I think it's really cute. And so I've been thinking like, oh, we'll use it, we'll use it. We have not used it. So this we're gonna donate. It's past, it's far past the window to be able to return it. That feel, that does not feel good, right? But the only way I can maintain my house, have it be really easy to clean and tidy and to put stuff away is if we don't have this type of stuff around. So does it stink when we spend money on stuff and we're not using it? Yes, but the best thing we can do is not try to force ourselves to use it. It's to move it out, free up the space. And honestly, once this is donated, I'll never even think about it again. So I'm gonna put this into the donation bin. Um, the other thing I had in here is a summer shirt that Gage, it's, it won't fit next summer. Um, he really liked it, but it's just, you know, we're into fall or into winter now in Minnesota. So we're just going to let this go. And then also I saw this in the closet, which I used to use this as my, like, it's just a, you know, crossbody or whatever. Um, so I used to use this as my purse all the time, but now I have a different one. And so I need to, I can hear stuff in it. I think I took out all of the Oh yeah, we have receipts. Oh, well that's fun, a home goods gift card. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna toss out the receipts that are in here. I have a bin where I put receipts and then Tic Tacs, good. I'll take those out and then otherwise it looks like all the other important stuff. So I'll em empty this out quick, throw it in the donation box and then this space is done and it looks really good and it feels really good. Okay, so what I'm really hoping to show you is that our house can look like a hot mess, but it comes to back together so easily. Things have a place, they just need to get put back there. And honestly, mostly we were able to maintain it day in and day out, but sometimes like this, we've just been busy and, and the clutter creeps out again, but it's always so easy to pull it back together. So it really does not stress me out. In fact, this just, this feels really good to be pulling everything back together. So we're done in here. There has been some stuff, again, any flat surface will collect stuff. So let's clear this off and then we're gonna head into the bathroom. Okay, so yes, flat surfaces still collect clutter in our house, but at nowhere near the rate <laughs> that it used to. So again, uh, when we're like looking at those five categories of stuff, most often it's stuff accumulating here now that has a home. In the past, it was all the homeless stuff, but I've gotten pretty good about finding homes for everything. So like, here's my current purse that's just sitting here. I usually just 
hang it on there now or in the closet. Um, a couple more keys that should get hung up. This is a, a hair dryer that I want to donate. It was in the bathroom. I'll show you when I go to the bathroom. But I just didn't have a donation box handy when I pulled it out. But I didn't want it to get stuck back in the under the cabinet. So I just like pulled it out instead of here. Anyway, so that's what in the donation box. And then um, this is one of the boys' tape measures. So this just needs to get put away. Um, this is kind of cool. This is Callie from Butt First Coffee, her new planner that I've been checking out, which is um, really neat. You probably know Callie. She's so pretty. <laughs> it's a great planner. Um, so this I'm going to put over on my desk. So, so far I just have stuff that just needs to be put away. And then this is some stuff of Tom's. Um, it, we struggle sometimes because he mostly keeps stuff in his office out in the other building, but yet the mail still comes in here and then it needs to make its way out there. So, um, I might have to just leave this here for now and let him figure out what he wants to do with it, but that's okay because already this is looking so much better. Um, let's see, this I'll just put away as well. It, it like, it just doesn't even intimidate me or, or cause me concern anymore. All right. So over there, I'm going to have Miss Maggie, um, get working on the laundry while we go and work in the bathroom. Okay, let's head into this bathroom. Um, also, I'm not cleaning, cleaning right now. Like everything's gonna be vacuumed and swept and wiped down a little bit, but I just wanna get all the stuff like put away, cleaned up or picked up, decluttered. And then um, I'll come back and do that. That like, takes hardly any time at all once, once all the stuff's put away, right? So from here, this doesn't look too bad until you see the pile of stuff <laughs> on here. So again, when we're looking at those five categories of stuff, this is just stuff that needs to get put away. Um, I was videoing in here and some of the stuff was on the vanity and so I just moved it over there quick. But the reason being is that I actually wanted to go through some of this stuff and do a quick declutter. So I didn't want to just put it all back away again. So that's why I just set it over here quick. And then now we get to work on it together. Isn't that fun? <laughs> okay, so there are a few things that just need to get put away. Hairspray, hairbrush, hair straightener. So this is, this is just the stuff I used to get ready this morning. That really only takes a second to put away. I should have just put it away <laughs> before. All right, so let's stick this stuff away because it all has an easy place to go. That's actually the key to stuff getting put away. Um, so we'll put that stuff away quick. Oh, and my makeup bag too. But this stuff I pulled out of a drawer um, and it has to do with that hair dryer I showed you just a few minutes ago. So this stuff, well, there's a t-shirt mixed in. That doesn't go there. Um, this stuff was in the second drawer. And what happened was I won this really fancy uh, hair dryer. So have you ever seen a $400 hair dryer before? I hadn't. Some of you are fancy and like, you're like, of course, like I wouldn't blow dry my hair with anything else, right? I have not. Um, and uh, so I won this and I, the other hair dryer I showed you, like I was on the ledge, was just like an old, super cheap one um, that I've had for over 15 years, right? Does the job. But I was like, well, this is fancy and it's nice. It's supposed to be better for your hair and everything, right? I'm not recommending anyone go out and buy this, but if you win it, it's like, okay, cool. The problem is this cord is like really thick and heavy and has this big box thing on it. So it does not fit in my little bin down there that my old hair dryer used to go into. And there's also some nice attachments to it that maybe someday I'll learn how to use, right? So I was like, okay, I feel like this needs a special spot because it's kind of nice. So I decided to clear out this drawer down here for it, right? Because none of the stuff in there was really all that important. Um, and so I'm like, this is more important. I use this more frequently than any of that stuff. Okay, wow. Sorry, that was like a long explanation. <laughs> but I just want you to know my logic. I'm like, okay, this is prime real estate in this drawer right here. And so that's where the things we use all the time should be, right? Not like the occasional once in a while, very once in a while things, or just random stuff that I collected that no one's actually using, right? So that was my logic. And I'm always thinking about prioritizing the really good spaces for the stuff we use every single day. So this is the stuff I pulled out and it's just like a Adeline's extra pair of glasses um, and a empty glasses case, some earrings that I am fairly confident that they don't wear anymore, which is why I think they're here. Um, these are like the glasses wipes. So these kind of get used. Um, anyways, extra hair binders, um, 
Indian bracelets, which are super fun. And they these need to go with the girls' Indian dresses up. I have a container for them that they'll go into. But otherwise, just, you know, some extra, again, earrings. I don't think anyone is wearing. Oh, an extra thing of toothpaste. I didn't know that was in there. That's good. We can use that. Okay. Um, Adeline's old pair of glasses. So none of this needed to take up that real estate. The earrings I'm gonna have that, or the, yeah, the jewelry I'm gonna have them go through. And these just need to get put away. And then I need to find a place for her glasses to be moving forward. So I'm gonna think about that real quick while I put this stuff away. So basically what I'm doing, I'm sorting out any garbage, um, any things that like just clearly are not getting used. So that can get thrown away putting away the stuff that has a home, like the hair binders um, and a couple other things. So getting that put away, this is just an extra, I don't need this container in there. So for now I'm gonna put it in the basement because I have some extra organizing containers down there to see if I find a place to use it. And then if not, I'm um, eventually I'll just get donated. And then these things like extra toothpaste, cotton rounds. Um, this was some extra like makeup the girls wore for like, it was kind of like um, for like a team thing they were doing. This, I have that little bin of extra stuff underneath the vanity here. So this stuff I'm just going to put in there because it's like extra stuff. This doesn't need to be in prime real estate at all. It's a, if we need it, it's in there. That's where I know to look for duplicates and that kind of stuff. So um, then the rest is just some clothes that need to get folded up and put away. And then these are just like our face washcloths that came out of the wash, but haven't gotten just fold up and put away yet. So um, I'm going to put this stuff away and then we'll take care of that real quick. And you know, a couple weeks ago, I did a video um, about really like the, well, it was like the benefits, how decluttering changes your life. And I, I can't believe how much easier our house is to manage now. Again, it can look messy. I don't, I didn't want to be deceptive today. Like, uh, I think it looks messier on video than it does in person or feels in person. Like this has felt, it's, it just feels very manageable to me. Um, even like, I still got to figure out where I'm going to put Adeline's glasses now. Um, so like, I still have like a problem to solve, but again, that doesn't really stress me out. Um, but otherwise mostly like everything just kind of goes back to its spot and I'm just constantly aware. Like, even as I was like putting Tom's t-shirts away, like, is, is this drawer getting too full? Do I need to go through it with him? Like, you know, which he's always very glad to do. Uh, anytime I'm putting stuff away, I don't, I don't want the drawers and cabinets and everything to be over full because then it's too hard to put stuff away. But mostly just as we keep like dropping the inventory, dropping the inventory, less inventory, less inventory, it has made our house so easy to manage. And now I just look at this stuff so much differently. Um, like I really look at every item as something I have to manage. And so if it's not adding value, I am just kind of like, meh, I don't, it's just, I don't, I don't need it. It's not worth my time. I've experienced how enjoyable our house is with so much less. And I don't, I don't ever want to lose that. Like I never want to go backwards. Um, I want to maintain this. And so that really makes it a lot easier to just keep decluttering, purging, tossing stuff that we're not using, not trying to figure out ways to like use up all the little things or anything like that. Just being like, if we're not using it, let's just let it go. And I don't, it's not being wasteful. Like we try to donate as much as possible. Mostly we just don't buy as much or bring as much in the house. So we are so much less wasteful than we were in the past. So yes, am I sometimes donating like brand new things or throwing away stuff that like could potentially be used? Yes. But in the grand scheme where we just consume so much less, we're much better with it. We waste so much less. So, um, yeah, I think we're we're coming out <laughs> way ahead. Okay, so we got this room all cleaned up. Doesn't that just look so much better? Again, flat surfaces. If I could get rid of every flat surface in our house so it can't collect clutter, I would 100% do that. Maggie's working on uh, sorting the laundry and putting it away, so why don't we head into the laundry room? I don't think there's too much in here, but looks like some things just need to get put back away. Mostly this room really stays pretty put together. Like the sock bins for the kids will get pulled down and then I have to put them back. The only thing I don't have a good solution for is like extra storage. So these are like the laundry stripping things I'll use, but we use it so infrequently. Sometimes I'll put some borax in. Borax is really good for like dirt, like actual mud and, and dirt stuff. So sometimes I'll put that in, but I just don't really have a great place to store it. I have thought about um, down on the floor here, we kind of keep some extra cleaners um, but I don't love just having like stuff sitting on the floor. 
So I kind of wondered like maybe if I just had some kind of like shallow basket that I could put down there. Um, yeah, this stuff would fit, like it would fit under the shelf. So maybe that would be the best solution. I have some extra baskets and stuff in the basement and then these are just extra too. Um, so maybe we'll look down there real quick and see if we can find something. Okay, so that then, if we can move that stuff down there. Um, we also, we got a new washer and dryer. Fancy, all right, <laughs> like it feels super fancy to me. Um, like these came with it, so um, those can go with that. Mostly we try to use kind of like more natural detergent like Molly suds, but you know, if someone gives you detergent, you know, like you'll use it, right? This is garbage. These are, the like reference guides, you know, I'm just gonna throw these away because if I have a question about how to use these, I'm just gonna Google it. Like I'm not gonna flip through here and read this. So there's no sense in me even keeping any like user's manuals or anything like that. So that I'm gonna throw away. And then these sit on here. So Maggie's our, our laundry girl. Like she she's in charge of laundry. So these are down there so she can reach them um, more easily. So really, there's a couple things that just need to get tucked back into their baskets here. I'm gonna throw this stuff away. Our stain removers. This room's pretty good to go. This, the organization I put in place in here has actually worked really well and I'm very glad for that. So, all right, we're gonna look for a basket for that extra soap stuff and then we're doing pretty good in here. Okay, so let's uh, see if we can make this area just, I don't know, feel a little bit better. So I have one of these containers from Ikea I'm not positive if all of this will fit in here, but let's try it out. Oh, we might be in luck. So, oh, that's heavy. We got the Tide and the Borax. And then this is like a extra Molly Suds. I always buy it in like a two pack off of Amazon. All right. Oh, well, that actually uh, works pretty good. Let's see, okay, this garbage needs to be empty. I'm not, I said it wasn't actually cleaning right now, but you know, and it's just like an easy, quick thing to do. It's kind of nice to take it out. Okay, and I see a dirty sock under here. All right, I still really like this whole like basket bin system for our laundry too, so. Okay, so this will just slide under there. In an ideal world, we won't have anything under here. I think that would actually be better, but like I said, I don't really have any other storage space for it. And I'll put the toilet push back and this feels a lot better. All right, let's uh, move on to the living room. I definitely have some decluttering that I wanna do in there. Okay, so Maggie has um, the laundry done, sorted, put away. So we have a few things to put away on there, but I really want to declutter um, under here, especially since the boys aren't here right now. It's a very like safe time to do it. So why don't we tackle that and then we'll just put away a few other things. And actually this room's gonna come together really quickly. All right, you can see my new pillows. Oh, back there for Christmas. I'm gonna actually put them away. It's not quite, well, I don't know. I'm not ready to decorate for Christmas just yet. So I might put them away till then just when nothing happens to them because I like them so much. But um, I'm just gonna pull everything out. This isn't a big area. I'm always aware of like making a big mess and then not wanting to finish it. I'm just gonna pull all this stuff up and out and sort it quick and then um, yeah, I think that'll make it the easiest. What still continually surprises me is how few toys kids need to be happy and content and creative. In fact, as we've scaled back toys more and more, I find that they enjoy their toys the most when they have very few. And this is very counterintuitive, countercultural, counter marketing, that kids just need their imagination to be happy and content. They don't need all of this stuff. Now, of course, toy manufacturers don't want that message to get out, right? But again, our kids, they, they uh, especially now it's getting colder out, they play around this table for hours and they need just a, a small amount of Legos or a game or, uh, you know, they'll color or different things. Um, but they just need so little like supplies or actual toys. And so that continually surprises me. And so when I end, am decluttering them or going through them, I'm pretty ruthless because I'm like, if they are not playing with this, if they've moved on, if they've lost interest in it, me keeping it is not going to cause them to become more interested in it again. Right? Like I know their favorites, the things they go back to over and over again, like these Legos. And, uh, I've just over the years been willing to continue to let that other stuff go. And I'm so grateful because it makes our house more enjoyable and they just seem so much happier because of it. Okay. So my goal is always for the games to just 
very fit very comfortably down here and then also for the container of legos um so this is kind of starting to creep up a little bit so i might just pull a few things out of here i don't think need to be in here anymore um just so that everything fits in here again but overall for how much time all of this gets played with like um this, it's a pretty low amount of inventory, so I'm okay with, with all of this. Um, I don't want the games to take up as much space, so I'm just gonna put back the ones that we for sure play with, like do a favorites first approach, and then, uh, then uh, the rest we're just gonna let go. So Rummy Cube, that's hands down our favorite. Um, the Checkers gets played with, and also the, um, what is this called? Jenga, I think it's a off-brand Jenga. Um, so definitely I want to keep those out and then also this game buildsy. Um, but that's plenty of games for right now. We have a couple upstairs too that will sometimes rotate out. Um, so that's good. So these I'm going to, I'm going to donate this one and this one. So I'm going to put these in the donation box and then this one, they play sometimes, but not as frequently. So this I'm going to have go upstairs and these I'm going to put in the donation box quick. And then I grab my garbage bag too, because some of this I want to put into the garbage. This was fun for a while, but they don't really play with it anymore. So I'm going to let this go. Similar with this, it's, it's broken and I'm always just trying to collect the data. This is just empty. This like little craft things and stuff that can just get thrown away. This we don't need. Even this, I don't think they actually really play with it. So I'm just going to let that go too. All right, that I can put back down there. This stuff I'm gonna put away. Oh, and then um, like paper stuff. We always keep these for a little bit, but they never rebuild them again. And if they really want to, you can get the Lego app and you can download the plans for any of them. So I'm gonna let those go. And then we have just like um, like some coloring sheets and stuff. We don't need that. Um. Yeah, I don't think we need any of this. They live at this table, so the so much gets done. So sometimes like the artwork and stuff just gets shoved under here. So it's just a matter of going through it once in a while. But otherwise, um, I think we really are just leaving the stuff they play with. And then I'm gonna put these Legos down here because these this is their current like everything they've been playing with, and the ones on the floor. So we'll put those here. I kind of wish I had another container huh, for them, but it's fine. Um, like I said, they get played with so much that it's this is okay uh, with me. And then I just have some of these to put away. Let's go over there. All right. Um, I'm going to straighten this all up real quick, and then we're doing pretty good. All right, so let's put the couch together. Um, Adeline has her cross stitch here. So you can put that away. Gage's slippers and, you know, some scotch tape. Why wouldn't there be scotch tape on the couch, right? All right, I'm going to throw these upstairs and put this away. Real quick. All right. And then we'll just straighten this up real fast. I, actually, this is usually Corbin's job. He's like a pro at putting the couch back together now, but he's not home right now. So, see, they've just destroyed these pillows now. It's fine. It is what it is, but it's, it's not my preference. <laughs> oh, well. All right. And this couch. Um, I do think I want to put the pillows away. I have plastic bags here. Adeline, would you want to come and grab your two coats here real quick and put these away? I don't know. Maybe we'll just leave the pillows for now because they look nice, right? Okay, we got this room pulled back together. Thanks, Adeline. Okay, so uh, the dining room, luckily, this is just stuff. Um, these are donations. I was just working on the video for... Um, the 10 things to declutter before the holidays. And so this is all that stuff that's getting donated. So this can go in my donation box right there. And then this is our bin of winter gear. It has like the extra snow pants and all that, but, and all of the kids have like two winter coats, depending on whether they're playing outside or like their good winter coat. I'm not quite ready to pull all of that out yet. So I think I'm just gonna put this bin back in the basement. Usually once we get like a real heavy snow, then I'll pull it out and then we'll actually move everything into the closet. Um, but otherwise, we have the table um, pretty cleared off. I've gotten pretty good at the table is lava 
and normally it gets piled with stuff because it's right when you walk in the door but i'm like no table is lava we don't put anything on there and so i've gotten a lot better at that it's not perfect but i really try to make an effort every day to clear it off and to just never set stuff on it because what you just have to move it again like there's nothing that actually belongs on here right so anything that gets set on the table has to get moved again so it's just easier if we don't i did have this i actually want to paint the stools over by the computers um, because it's kind of warm out today and sunny and I don't know how many more days like this we'll have, but I also don't want to get distracted from finishing my my whole house declutter here. So I'm going to think about it <laughs> a little bit more. We'll see if by the end of the video I paint the stools or not. So we'll hang on to this for right now. But this room, there's nothing in this room, right? So there just wasn't really anything to declutter in here. All right. So again, flat surfaces, collect clutter. Um, this is kind of our main like school area where I'll work when I'm working in the house and not in my office. So it just, it just gets stuff on it. And so it's just a regular um, task to clear up. So let's tackle this real quick. And you know, in the past, I used to get really frustrated when these spaces would continue to get kind of messy and cluttered up again. Uh, but now I realize that like, that's actually just part of life. It doesn't mean I haven't decluttered enough or that our house isn't really manageable. It just means like, especially with homeschooling, there's five to six of us here all the time, every day, all day, right? So there's always gonna be stuff. And so I'm always looking at like, has the inventory crept up? Is there stuff we need to declutter? Like we're gonna move over here next to the bookcases and there is some stuff we need to declutter here. Or is it the habit? Like stuff just has to get put away and everybody has to learn to put their stuff away when they're done using it, right? Like if there's a glass by the computer, just go put it away, <laughs> right? So we're constantly reinforcing those habits. I'm giving reminders. Sometimes I do it myself. Sometimes I make them come and do it, but um, still keeping an eye on the inventory, but just also realizing flat surfaces are always gonna collect stuff. And so it's just really important to every day be clearing them off because we all know that clutter attracts clutter. And if you leave a little bit on there, it is just a matter of time before there's lots of stuff on there. All right, I did decide to paint the stools. I don't know if they're really drying though, cause it's only 41 degrees outside, but the sun was out until it, until it started to set. So I think I'm gonna bring them inside overnight and we'll see if they dry <laughs> or not, but it's a really pretty sunset. Okay, so we're gonna move over to this area. And again, as I'm, at any time I'm just picking up, putting stuff away, I'm just always looking for clues. Has the inventory crept up too much where it's hard to put stuff away? So if stuff's getting left on the floor or on top of the bookcase, um, often that's a sign that the inventory has crept up. And I do believe that it has crept up in this area. And so again, um, this is like kind of our main homeschool area and I'm just gonna go through it and look for books and different things that we're just not using anymore, right? I only wanted, this is prime real estate. I only wanna keep stuff here that we use all the time. You know, sometimes in a space like this, I don't always know where to start and it feels a little bit overwhelming to me. So what's really helpful is to say, just start on one side and work your way across. So I started on the right side and just worked my way across. And again, we're thinking about those five categories of things. Um, in any space, there's just five things. There's dishes, there's laundry, there's garbage, um, things that have a home and things that don't have a home. And in this space, really usually what's here is garbage and things that have a home. Pretty much everything has a home, it's just not in it. But the garbage creeps in in the form of art projects, different things that have been started, not finished. Like Corbin even had a model car that he did this summer. It didn't actually turn out that great. And so uh, you'll see me here just throwing it away because it's not so special that we would continue to keep it or we put it in his memory box. I mean, these kids make multiple things a day, <laughs> really, and some of them, right? And so if we kept everything, oh my goodness, the inventory in our house would be out of control. And so we've practiced a lot that, yeah, it's so fun to create things and we keep the most special of special, but the bulk of it ends up getting thrown away when we've lost interest in it. And ugh, I'm gonna show you too. Adeline has a whole garbage bag of stuff from her bedroom. Um, she was looking for something in her craft drawer up in her bedroom and was just like, I think I need to clean this out quick and kill with a whole garbage bag. Um, but you know, she's actually really great at realizing when her craft supplies and, and all of that, that inventory gets to be too much. She doesn't enjoy her projects. She feels overwhelmed by it. So she's actually got, even though she's very crafty, I mean, even right now she's sitting on the couch cross-stitching, um, 
she is like really good about managing her image right now don't get me wrong their desks look like a hot mess <laughs> right now and mostly i just let them be unless we're having like someone come over that's actually why we kind of tucked them around this corner out of sight so it doesn't mean their spaces don't get messy but when it is time to clean them up and and go through stuff she's really good at just getting rid of stuff she's not using donating it or throwing it away and so all of our kids now are really good that like if if they've made something and they're not using it they'll let it go but then also um our youngest gauge he he's the most attached to like sentimental things and so on the bottom shelf um the lowest level on the far right the two white bins are his treasure bins and so he can keep anything in there that is super special to him um but once they start to get too full that the lid doesn't fit on then um then we have to go through them and so him and adeline um, went through them right before school started. So the end of August, they went through them together and he got rid of some stuff. Usually you can look at the bottom and, and find some stuff that isn't as special anymore. And so they went through it not that long ago and got rid of a bunch of stuff. And so now everything fits in there fine and the lids fit on. So we, I, I totally understand if you have kids that are like seem really attached to things. And so that's fine. I think we still just have to work to find tactics to help them be able to contain it and for it not to feel super messy because no matter who you are, kid or adult, um, clutter creates stress, right? Like we know clutter releases stress hormones. And so we don't want our kids to get stressed out by this, even if they're really attached to stuff. And it seems like, well, it's more stressful for them to let go of stuff. No, like we just have to help them learn these skills, right? So we keep trying and practicing at different things. But for us, the, the treasure bins have been a really great help and have worked really well. And I brought the stools in. The blue is a little bit bright. <laughs> it's a little bit brighter. Than the cabinet i was wanting them to just kind of blend in and not really stand out um so it's not quite right but they look way better i think than then when they were black and red so that's good okay why don't we um i want to show you the kitchen the other bathroom is like a non-issue so i'm glad for that there's actually something in our bedroom that i want to show you quick with a time will tell bin so let's go look at that um, and then we'll come back to the kitchen okay now i keep our bedroom like really pared down because i love the simplicity in here the peacefulness this is like my get away from it all so even if your house isn't fully decluttered yet i do think there's a lot of wisdom in having a space in your house that you just really intentionally keep really simple and peaceful and decluttered so anyways side note <laughs> but i want to show you uh this time i'll tell bin that i did oh it's a little heavier <laughs> than i thought um so uh about a month and a half ago well, it was around we were starting school i guess I just noticed that uh, our youngest Gage was having a really hard time keeping his half of their bedroom clean. And so again, then I'm like, eh, I think he has too much inventory. But I didn't have a lot of time to just like sit with him and go through it. He's very deliberate when we're making um, decisions. So I was like, you know, I wanna make this easier for him. And so I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna pack up a bin of stuff. We're gonna do it, time will tell. If, there, if he asks for anything, of course I'll go get it back out. But it was all stuff that I was just like really confident that he wasn't going to miss. Uh, it was clothes. There's like some, a few toys in here. Um, I'm trying to, let me see. Come a little closer. The sun is getting bright. It's so wonderful though. <laughs> it's mostly clothes. So a lot of times what will happen is Corbin will outgrow something and then he'll just like throw it over to Gage's side, even though it doesn't fit Gage yet. And I'm like, that's not the system, <laughs> right? So Gage always ends up with like way more clothes. He also really likes clothes. Um, so he, I don't know, he seems to accumulate a lot more clothes. Wow, it is, it's mostly um, clothes. And then there's just some random like toy stuff in here. But as I was packing it up, I was just like, again, I felt pretty confident. This was all stuff um, that he wasn't gonna miss. A lot of the clothes he had like already outgrown. Like these were shorts that will not fit him next summer. So I don't even have to worry about packing it away. And so what I did was I just packed it up quick because I wanted this to be a very like quick thing. I didn't have a lot of time. Packed it up, set it aside. And now it's like a month and a half, two months later. And so now I'm like, it's been time tested. We did not miss any of this. In fact, I look in his room and I'm like, I feel like I should actually do another bin of this. And so now I am just going to donate all of this stuff in here. Um, I'm not even gonna take a lot of time to go through it. Like I'm literally just like doing a quick look, like is there anything? um that he might miss like these might be someone else's right um so like i might pull these out but otherwise like there's just they have enough clothing right like they need nothing out of here 
So I'm going to donate all of this, but I just want to encourage you if there's any spaces in your house that just feel really overwhelming right now and you need a quick win, you need to make like some, an actual difference, grab a tote or a box, fill it up with stuff, set it aside, time test it, see if you miss any of it. If you don't, then like I said, now all of this is just going to get donated. Okay. Um, so yeah, this room doesn't need anything. Let me, I do want to show you the bathroom we walked by to get here and then we'll head into the kitchen and, um, I think we'll be just about done for today. This, it actually feels really good. <laughs> That's, I'll show you. It's actually adding up to be kind of a lot that we're getting rid of too. It, it might not seem like it as we've been going, but um, I'll show you the piles and the bags that we're getting rid of. Okay, so this bathroom, we just keep so simple. Everyone's pretty good about putting their clothes in the laundry room when they take a shower and it's really easy to put everything away. So just encouragement to keep going further with decluttering until a space functions really well. Like it's possible. This is our only shower in the house, right? Like everybody uses this bathroom. We don't all get ready in here. Like the kids and I get ready in the other bathroom, but Tom gets ready in here and we all shower in here and everything. It is possible to, even with six people in a house, to have the spaces like work well and function well. And if you feel like that's not the case in your house, keep reducing the inventory. Okay, in the kitchen. Um, but even just today, I got an email um, from Michelle who's in our membership group. And we had been talking about like kids toys and kids stuff recently in there. And she had asked the question like, but how do you know if it's just like me not doing a, a good job managing this stuff and not doing a good job parenting the kids with managing their stuff? Like, am I just not being good at it or lazy with it or whatever? Or is it still too much inventory? And that's the thing, it's still too much inventory because we have to shape our homes to fit us, not us to fit our homes. Are there habits you need to develop like loading the dishwasher every day and all that? Yeah, of course. But if there's continually stuff on the floor and all the flat surfaces and it just feels, still feels very hard to manage your house, like if your house feels hard, that just means you have too much inventory. There's nothing wrong with you at all. And so I have been surprised how far we've had to go with lowering the inventory to keep it um, at a place where it doesn't stress me out and it doesn't feel hard. And even like going around today, like I said, the boys went hunting, Tom went hunting with the boys. And I'm just like, all right, like let's go around the house, get it just get anything extra out that's crept in and like, it's just gonna feel so good, right? Okay, so over here, um, well, we have some dishes that I'm gonna have Miss Adeline come in and do soon, but um, we got, we decided to get like, a, our Keurig was not working right anymore, which is really frustrating because it's not that old. Um, and so we're like, well, maybe we should upgrade and, and get an espresso machine, right? So I found an open box one, so it was like half the price on Amazon. So I'm like, all right, I don't know if I love it. It makes this coffee really strong, um, you know, and obviously the pods are very expensive. I have found a place where they're cheaper, but you know, anyways. Um, so now we have two coffee pots sitting here and then, you know, it comes with the frother and then here's the instruction books for it. And here's the pods that we need to get stored away now, but am I ready to make the commitment and, you know, take the, the K cups out of the drawer and all that. So it's just, what should be feel like a blessing and like an upgrade, like this is so exciting. Isn't it amazing how it becomes a burden? And I also had gotten um, this new chopper and it has just been sitting here in the box because it takes extra mental energy to learn these new things. And again, I was like, oh cool, this will make life so much easier, chopping onions and veggies, right? But I still have to figure out how to use it and you know, keep the box for a little bit, make sure it works and all that. So uh, it's, What's meant to be like a good upgrade, often it just adds more stress. So anyways, it's fine. Um, I'm committed to using it the next time that like we cook, so we'll use it soon. But meanwhile, um, like I said, I don't really keep user's manuals, so I'm gonna let this stuff go. Um, I figured out how to use this, so this can just get put away now. So in the kitchen, um, I had Adeline finish loading the dishwasher. Not everything fit in there. There was already dirty dishes in that, so there. So we were adding to it. Um, and then I just wanted to get a sink of water going. There was a bunch of like water bottles and mugs that need to be hand washed. So I'm like, let's just get a sink going for that. Get those in there and then I could better see what it is that was there that needed to be put away. But we did just make a pass to the kitchen um, in my membership group. And I'll show you a few things that I am decluttering out of here. Um, we had this batter dispenser and Adeline would use it sometimes for pancakes or like cupcakes, but now like she's so good at making them without it. And this is just one more thing to clean. So I always be looking at these gadgets that are meant to make our life easier or quicker. Often they don't when it comes to cleaning it. So we end up not using them because they're a pain to clean. And that's kind of my fear with that veggie chopper, but I, 
I, some of you say you love it. Some say they have it and they don't like it. it. It can go in the dishwasher, I guess. So, but I don't know. It doesn't, you don't always want to put stuff in the dishwasher with blades, right? Cause it can dull it faster. So anyways, um, my thought is maybe we'll like chop up a bunch of veggies and then put some in the freezer. Anyways, I digress. <laughs> so, but I'm always looking to like, is that more of a pain to wash than it's actually worth? So we're gonna let this go. Um, just like an extra plastic container. Um, this round cake pan, it, it was up here, but we like hardly ever use it. So this I'm just gonna put down back down in the basement. So I try to keep the only stuff I keep in the kitchen is stuff that we are using consistently now. And so that did, did not make the cut. Um, we had just like a random ice cube tray. This came with our house and <laughs> I got some new ones. And it's so funny how I'm like hesitant to get rid of the old ones because I'm like, well, what if I don't like the new ones as much as the mismatched old ones? I don't know, right? So I've been hanging on it. it it's, it's been time tested. It can go now. And then I had this bin from our old fridge. Um, I had some acrylic bins in there, but then when we got this new fridge, I didn't need them. And it's just been in a cabinet. And I'm just like, why, why am I, why? <laughs> why do I hang on to this extra stuff? So this is gonna get donated as well. So um, it feels good to be moving that stuff out. And again, especially in the kitchen, I am just, I am ruthless in the kitchen. Like if these things are not working for us, helping me in this season of life and cooking, then it is out of the kitchen because when our kitchen is really decluttered and simplified, I've actually found I like being in here now. And even now just to like hand wash the water bottles and everything does not feel bad. It's, not, it's kind of enjoyable. I look out the window, the water's warm. It's cold here in Minnesota right now. Um, and so it's just so interesting to me to that tasks that I used to hate in the past, like cooking and cleaning. Now I'm like, oh, it kind of feels good to bring the house in order and to pull everything back together. And so again, kind of going back to that question I just mentioned a few minutes ago, inventory is the problem, not you. It's the extra stuff. It's the clutter. That's the problem, not you. So keep working to reduce the inventory. Um, and it really does make the everyday tasks so much easier and more enjoyable. All right. I still don't know what I'm gonna do with an espresso <laughs> maker and the other coffee pot, but again, it's fine. We can just have them both for a little bit till we fully decide what it is we want to do. I kind of don't want either of them. So there's that, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It's fine. We'll figure it out. All right. So we got the kitchen pulled back together. I did, we, we have been letting this fruit basket sit out too, which is good. We definitely eat, um, we've been eating a lot of fruit lately. So I like having it out, but what I, I really like is there is space in the pantry. So like if someone, if people are coming over, I just really want the kitchen like fully tidied up. Um, I'll put this away in the pantry cabinet and then the air fryer also fits in there. And then the egg baskets, we can tuck those away too so that the counters are just really nice and clean and cleared off. I mean, that's my preference, right? But for daily living, sometimes we need stuff like this, right? But it's fine, it's been working really well and um, you know, it is, <laughs> it is what it is. So it's always function over fashion, but in my perfect world that there would be a spot for this that doesn't have to be sitting on the counter. Uh, let me show you everything that it is that we are uh, throwing away and donating because like I said, the pile ended up being a lot bigger <laughs> than I was actually expecting. All right, so here's everything we're getting rid of. We have the black trash bag. This all is a donation pile. I'll, I'll straighten it up a little bit and go bring it out to the car. This bag, this is what I was talking about. Um, that Adeline, oh my goodness, Adeline, this is so heavy. Um, that Adeline filled up from her bedroom. So that's really good. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, and then this gray bin of stuff, I'm gonna just, um, I think I, I don't know, it's the donation, so I don't, I might just dump it into a, like just a, a trash bag or something so that we can donate it since it's mostly clothes. So all this stuff moving out in about an hour's worth of work, I could have got done way faster if I wasn't talking <laughs> so much, right? But again, you're not the problem, the inventory is. So if any part of your house feels hard right now, not easy to tidy, uh, my goal is like five minutes to be able to tidy each room or space. If that's not what you're experiencing right now, that's okay. You just have to probably go further with decluttering. But like I said before, you're not gonna miss it. I am never gonna think about any of this stuff again. <laughs> and so I'll get it dropped off, get it going where it needs to go, and I'm never even gonna think about it again. And so yes, do we ever wanna, we don't wanna be wasteful, we don't wanna be hasty, but life is too short to take care of stuff that isn't adding value to our life. So permission to let it go. All right, well, I love you. I hope you have a really good day and I'll see you again soon.